Hey guys and good morning. This is my turkey. <laughs> this is my turkey Winifred, Winnie for short. Um, she thinks she's a human. She follows you around. She enjoys pets. She'll just lay down. <laughs> she's super sweet and she's probably going to follow us to the barn to do chores. So let's see. <laughs> another raccoon in there. We've been catching so many raccoons in the live trap. Is it the big one? Yeah. Uh, because they keep getting into the grain and grain is expensive so we just can't have that. And actually it's not that they're getting into the grain because we keep our grain up. It's they were getting into the molasses that we put on the grain and knocking it over. Honey. We had a pretty big storm last night, so she's muddy. There were probably, there's like a little hut. We have to keep the barn locked because I don't want to clean it, to be honest. The weather's nice and they can be outside. I don't want to scoop poop up if they could just poop at them. But um, it makes her a little dirtier that way. Yeah. We have crested her peak production. She was making eight gallons a day in her peak. That's pretty cool. But she's down to three now, <laughs> which is fine. Now with her being past peak production, it makes me start to, I'm a worrier at heart. I, but not about most things. <laughs> about not having enough. I've got this like scarcity thing inside of me. And so I like to hoard everything for myself. That's a problem I have when you have a business. Um, but anyway, I start to think about what am I gonna do? Because Honey is a cow that dries herself off in her history with me. She'll get to almost a year and then it'll just dry up. And there's not like, we could keep milking her if I wanted like a pint a day, but that just seems silly. And the whole point in having two cows is so that in theory, you're never dry. So you always have a cow in milk, but the problem is they calved very close to one another. Honey was in January, don't do that. And Mercy was in March. And so there's really not that big of a difference there. And so now I'm just fingers crossed that I can limp through. They should be bred, but we're also having an issue there. So who knows? Being consistent with content in the season of life that I'm in currently has been very hard. I homeschool the kids. I'm trying to run a regenerative farm. I'm trying to start a business. I'm trying to keep my YouTube channel afloat. I'm trying to stay sane. I'm trying to make and preserve and harvest all of our own food. <laughs> you know, just a couple, just a couple things. But I have a plan. I obviously, I have more than just a half gallon of milk in this pail but I don't have any more jars clean, so what's a girl to do? <laughs> They're all occupied in the fridge, which I guess means that I need to go through what's in my fridge. I would say we're milk rich right now. Um, I've just <laughs> got a couple jars to go through, and that's only from three days total. I'm gonna talk to you guys while I make my coffee drink. This is yogurt I made last week. It smells delicious. I call this coffee, but in reality, it's like a coffee flavored smoothie, but I'm here for it. I'm on a kick. I drink it every day. Plus, this goes along with my theme of, I try to eat something fermented every single day, whether that's, in this case, it's yogurt. This yogurt is just fermented milk um, with a culture. 
in it. Fermenting things is a way that you can not only preserve your food, but also increase, it's one of the only ways that you can increase the nutrition in your food when you're preserving. Because by canning and drying and whatever, um, it does preserve a lot of it, but it's not 100%. You're losing nutrients in the process of preserving it, but actually by fermenting, you're growing the nutrition because of those healthy gut bacteria. Same reason why people take probiotics. I'm making my own probiotics, and there's millions and billions more probiotics in what I'm doing than the tiny little pill that they formulate um, for people. It works with your gut a little better. But anyway, I put yogurt and bananas. Then, oh no, I'm running low on my... Why are you following me? I have a posse forming behind me. I recently consolidated all of my, I call them my special layers because it was my egg color breeding bunch. Um, I recently put most of them, 99% of them, in the coop with all the other ones because I've hatched enough for the year and I'm sick of having 50 sets of chickens to do 50 sets of chores for every day and those are the stragglers left. So I'm gonna catch them and put them up, but not right now. I'm in my jungle of a high tunnel this morning. Oopsie. But you know what I have down here? Free tomatoes. Because I have about mm, a billion, like actual real number, a billion, <laughs> volunteer tomato plants in here. I'm not complaining though. That's a pretty good problem to have. I'm amongst my fall, these are my fall babies. If you guys have not started your fall garden yet, I highly suggest you do. Is it a pain in the butt to start plants and tend them in the heat of the season? The stressful part of the season, everything is coming in, everything needs done all the time, but is it worth it? So worth it. When you're picking your veggies after everybody else's garden has quit and yours is still going, that's a great feeling. I need to, God bless it, although the cucumber, or the cucumber, the um, cabbage moths, I could do without those. I'm going to dust these with some diatomaceous earth here in a little bit, and hopefully that takes care of my problem. But before I do that, I'm going to finish my coffee and talk to you guys about my favorite subject, food. In the beginning, a lot of people thought I was nuts, and I'm sure if you're on the same journey that I am, a lot of people think you're nuts, but then eventually you keep doing it and you keep showing up, and then suddenly people are asking you questions, and that feels good. But it's hard to be different. It's hard to walk upstream when everybody else is just leisurely floating downstream and you've got like 100 pounds on your back and you're walking against the current or that's what it feels like a lot of times. I have to say no to a lot of things. You have a lot of resp responsibilities all of the time that you just grin and bear it for. But in return, you get for one, a life that not many people have, good or bad. <laughs> and for two, oh my gosh. Am I even gonna have fall cabbages if these guys keep eating them? It's hard to be different. It's hard to have different ideas. It's hard to um, embrace the suck sometimes because sometimes it does suck. And sometimes you just gotta do it anyway. Um, that gets easier over time though. You get a little tougher, a little tougher skin. I also just don't care what other people think anymore. When I first started, I'll never forget, someone very close to me said, when, we, when I was like, I'm gonna raise chickens for like a, a year's worth of chicken, like I don't wanna buy chicken at the store. It's not the same at all. And I offered my farm fresh chicken. I was like, I'll give you one. And they're like, I'll buy my chicken at the store. I'm like, you have no idea. You don't get it. And you know what? That's fine. You can't change everybody. Not everybody's gonna get it. Some people are genuinely gonna think you're nuts. Some people wish they were you, but just don't have it in them. But 
The reason why we keep doing this day after day and year after year is because you can't buy the kind of food I grow at the store. And if you can buy it, it ain't in my budget. Free tomatoes. And because you can't buy, you know, organic, non-GMO, A2A2 milk at the store, I have two dairy cows. And because I can't get 100% organic, non-GMO, forested pork at the store, I grow my own. Same thing with chickens, same thing with beef, same thing with everything. And where I'm going with this is that for the last few years, I can't believe it's been that long, but it's literally been like it's normal to me now. It's been hardcore four years, but even before then I was dabbling in it. I've been making all of my family's bread. Anything that contains wheat, pretty much, I'm making. That's a big wintertime activity for me. That's like my wintertime food hobby is that I love making sourdough and different renditions of it. I don't really have time to do that right now. In fact, I, um, I've, I've said a lot of times that you it's really hard to kill a sourdough starter. I killed mine. Oops. Luckily, though, I know what kind of person that I am in the summertime, so I dehydrated one of my old ones a while ago, so now I'm reviving it. So it's going to be fine. You can't buy the kind of sourdough or bread of any kind that I want to make at the store. I like to buy, I haven't been able to in a while because my KitchenAid died. I had a KitchenAid with a grinder, a grain grinder, which wasn't very good. If you get the option to get something else, get something else. It doesn't grind it fine enough. But I had that and one time I was grinding flour or wheat berries into flour and I was multitasking as one does, and my KitchenAid, I swear to you, walked off the counter and died. And I'm not joking. <laughs> it, li it must have got off kilter while I was making dough or something. I can't remember if I was grinding or making dough, probably a dough ball, got a little off kilter. I wasn't paying attention, and it just walked itself off the counter and broke, and chipped my floor. Since then, I haven't been able to grind my own wheat, and that's important to me because I buy uh, organic heirloom wheat berries, which are expensive. Um, I would like to try to grow my own, and I might, but <laughs> nevertheless, I do buy my wheat berries in because that's another thing that if you're buying pre-ground flour at the store, doesn't hold a lot of nutrition left. Um, also, they sift out the part that your body needs, kind of like the raw milk. So when you have raw milk, it has the enzyme to break down the lactose. When you buy pasteurized milk, it's heated up and it kills everything, good bacteria, bad bacteria, enzymes. So then all you're left with is the hard to break down lactose. Side note, I grew grapes from cuttings and I really need to pot these up before they die. But anyway, same thing with wheat. Uh, when you grind a wheat berry, you get the wheat bran, which is the outside fibrous part, and then you get the wheat flour. And when you're grinding your own flour, those mesh together, and your body uses the fiber in the outside of the wheat berry to break down or help break down or help, you know, lubricate with, with um, fiber to help you digest it better. Same thing with sourdough. Well, not same thing. But uh, sourdough helps your body break it down too because you're fermenting it. Another lactobacillus item. Anyway, I really enjoy baking bread. And I have my eye on this grinder and mixer because I need both now. But those things are very expensive. So I've come up with a plan. I'm going to try to attempt, and I'm not going to hold myself because I don't want to be overwhelmed. But I'm going to try to attempt to post at least five vlogs a week. So just the follow me around, what I'm doing, you know. I'm going to try to post five vlogs a week. That's hard for me, but I'm going to try until I raise enough money that I can buy the um, 
grinder and mixer that I want. I want a Nutramil grinder and and I want a Bosch mixer. And a goal without a plan is just a wish. You ever heard that? You ever had an old person tell you that? Well, this is my plan. And I have always thought that it's super cringy when people are like, like this video, follow me for more, blah, blah, blah. But here I am shamelessly doing it because I want that grinder and I want that mixer. And I'm raising money for a good cause here, people. So if you could like my video and share it with your friends, I would really appreciate it. <laughs> but really, I'm going to try to give you guys some day in the lifes maybe some recipes, maybe some preservation. We're getting in the season of preservation. And to raise $600 that I need for both of these items, <laughs> probably gonna take me a while. But unfortunately, or fortunately for you, unfortunately for me, YouTube pays you in little, literal pennies. So this might take me a really long time to achieve my goal. <laughs> but one of these days, I'll get it. Don't. I've got a bunch of vultures, but to be honest with you, I did it to myself, so I can't really complain about it. So this video, I'm going to keep short and sweet because this is the first one, you guys. And I'm going to shamelessly say like and subscribe because I want that mixer. Dang it. So thank you guys for hanging out with me. I'll see you very much in the future. Until next time.